Hi, you're listening to Kate Palmer and today I am so happy to be able to show you a brand new technique using Copic markers. It gives you really beautiful results. The key ingredients are Copic markers, embossing powder, distress ink, stamps, uh, Versamark ink, a glitz spritz and some white cardstock. Before I get started, I just want to mention that you may not want to use your only colourless blender for this. You will end up with a discoloured tip. You may end up with some slight shagginess to your chisel tip. And I would highly recommend making sure that you have the various ink blender refill before you start this. Stamp your images with Versamark ink and emboss with clear embossing powder making sure to leave lots of white space. The white space is essential for this technique to work. Using another Tim Holtz stamp and Memento Bamboo Leaf ink, stamp over the top of the embossing. Now you don't want to leave this on the actual embossing powder, so just using a tissue or a baby wipe, gently dab it off the embossing powder. See this, where it's bled onto the background as I've wiped? It doesn't matter. Use the lavender ink to add a few flourishes. You can't have too much white space. You'll see why when I'm finished. In step three, you need to color with your Copic markers. But here's the twist. You'll be coloring on top of the embossing powder. Starting with E47, start coloring over top of the embossing powder that makes up the branch. Now you don't need to be particularly fussy here, you just need to get a little bit of colour onto that embossing. So I hope you can see what I'm doing just there. I'm just adding it to that embossed image. For any areas where you'd like the image a little darker, like perhaps if you'd like a shadow under the branch or just to outline some of the bird, then make sure that you go off the embossed image. So right now I'm just colouring underneath the embossing. Very carefully, you don't want a huge halo of colour. Finish colouring this the same way, adding any shadows that you might like. You can see that I've added some darker areas underneath the branch. And that paler section is the same colour, but that's the part where I've coloured over the embossed image. So the darker areas is where I've coloured off the embossing. You can see it's just a very, very tiny amount. And the paler areas is the colouring directly on top of that embossed image. For the little bird, there are two bits here and here, the wing and his breast, which are just paper. They're not embossed. So just be prepared. There will be some parts of your image, whether you're using the same image I am or a different one, that will end up looking darker. That's how it's supposed to look. If you're colouring directly onto the paper, it will look darker. So I'll start here so you can see what I mean. See how much darker that is? And then when I colour onto the embossed area, it's quite pale. Finish colouring the rest of the bird in the same way using Y19 on the legs, V17 on the lower half of the bird, and on its back use C9. Don't forget, for any areas where you'd like a slightly darker shadow as the outline, colour off the embossed area onto the paper, but don't add too much. So this is my little bird up close. Now you can see it looks really scrappy at the moment. I have not put any effort into making that look neat. I've just got it coloured. That's all you want to do at this stage. Now because these are so fine, you need to be quite careful where you're applying your ink. Uh, in this case, I'd like the stems to stand out, so I'm going to be using my G17. And on the stems, just make sure that you go off the embossing powder. You still want to colour over the top of it. So colour over the embossing powder, but also make sure that you go off. Otherwise, the stems are very difficult to see because they're so tiny. So now onto the flower heads. Now the flower heads are the easy part. They're far too small to actually colour. So all I'm going to do is using one colour at a time, just add little spots. Now I won't use all three colours on each flower. I'll try and stick to just the two colours per flower so that it doesn't end up muddy. 
switching to the V17. So I want just a couple of these flowers. I'll mix the red and the purple. And on the rest, I'll add in the Y19. So this is where I am so far with the flowers. As you can see, there are some darker and lighter patches. That's just how it should look. This is where you're going to be using your blender pen. So starting with the brush tip, just start working in small circles. Your aim here is to push that color that you've applied onto the embossing off onto the cardstock. So you're looking to make a little halo around that embossing. Now at this point, try not to mix these particular colors. Wipe the blender on a piece of scrap paper just for this first step between colors. You don't really want the colors to get muddy. Now at this point, I have seen quite a few people uh, in my classes try and scrub that area, the little bird's chest, so that it's the same color as this embossed area. Don't do that. It's not going to do anything other than peel your paper. That's supposed to be darker. Just leave it alone. Now, yes, this black is an incredibly strong color. Don't worry. So start moving in little circles and end up with your bird outlined with the color. See how I've moved the color off the embossed areas onto the outside of the paper and now it's adding a halo of color around the bird. Also notice where I've got the black and the purple meeting here because I'm using my blender to actually move this color, the black and the purple don't look like a stark line. That is what you want. You want these nice soft lines here. There are a few areas on this that I think need a bit more color. So I'm just going to go back over with my Copics and add a little bit more. So again, just going back in with my Copic marker. That way when I go back over it, it'll give me a little bit more depth of color to play with. So keep in mind because you're using the blender, it actually softens all the colors. So even though you may have started with brown, that might not be the same kind of brown you end up with as your final result. The darker you've made this, the more the embossed images stand out. You can see how adding that second layer of color gives you a much better result. See what I mean there? Much easier to see that branch. Now you can see some of these areas, I'm actually pushing it out to get a darker halo. So for me, even at this point, that's looking, well, I really like it. I hope you do too. I'm really quite pleased with this. Um, the violet, the purple, it just something really special. So we're not quite done yet. I'm going to move on and do exactly the same thing on the flowers. Same process, little circles with the brush tip to start with, except on the flowers with these um, flower heads, we've got two colors. Those colors will be being blended together on purpose. Now, if you start to hear your blender squeaking, it's getting dry, add more ink. If you start to notice that the colors are not blending as easily as you've seen mine do, add a bit more ink. So what I might do before I do the rest of those colors is do the greens so that it fills in some of this space here. Same process as the bird. Little circles just to pull some of that color off the embossing and onto the cardstock. If any of the stems are too indistinct, then once we've finished this first stage, I'll just go back and add a little bit more of the Copic marker. Again, pulling it out onto the white so that it blends. You can see how easy this should be. If it's not blending this easily, your marker, your blender pen may need some re-inking. That's the biggest problem with this technique. So I'm just pulling it onto the white cardstock here, wiping any excess color off on the white. You can see I'm working over some of that memento ink and it's really not shifting. That's why it's a safe ink to use with the Copics. 
the Copic, the alcohol in the Copic inks does not reactivate the Memento, so it's safe to use. Now this is why I said you don't need to be particularly fussy about where you're putting your colours, because as you can see with what I'm doing to it, there is no way to predict how it might turn out when you're finished. And now I'm going to follow the same process that I did with the bird. If any of these flowers I feel are a little indistinct, I'm going to go and add a bit more of that Copic colour over the top of the embossed area and add a bit more colour to the image. I've added a little bit more of the violet and the red violet because I'd like this card to have more of a purple tone. Once I have more Copic on top of the embossing powder, I'm going to go over again with my blender pen and just blend that out into the edges. As you can see, I'm getting a beautiful, beautiful colour. I can't believe how nice this turned out myself. That step's now finished. Move on to the final one. Now before you go on to this last step, try and clean as much of that excess colour off the tip of your nib as possible. The next step requires the chisel tip of your Copic marker. Again, it needs to be nice and inky because you're going to use this for some scrubbing. So what you need to do is working from the middle of your embossing, stroke out like the rays of the sun. Now this does two things. It helps clean any residual color from your embossed image and it also helps fade those colors out into the white. Don't try and fill in all of the white area. You actually want some um, completely white cardstock left. Now, once you've done that, you can see all these little streaky bits here. You do not want to leave that looking streaky like this. So what you need to do now is make sure that your chisel tip has been cleaned off. And this is where the scrubbing comes in. Working in small circles, just scrub at the edge, just where that color meets the white cardstock. If you do have any areas where you're finding you have a an, uh, an odd line that you don't expect, add a little bit more of your Copic marker and just drag a little bit more out to try and soften that line. Again, this isn't even the final step. <laughs> this one's quite complicated. You are just aiming to soften those edges, not remove them all together, just to soften them so that they're not quite so noticeable. Again, just working out from the embossing towards the white cardstock. A tiny little bit more scrubbing at the edges of the flowers, and this step is done. You can see how nicely the C9 and the V17 have highlighted the little bird. And you can see how beautifully those colours have blended on the flowers. So you get that almost watercolour effect background. Now if you've got any areas like I do just here which are a little bit whiter than you might like, use the tip to tip method with your Copic blender pen and the colour that you'd like on there. Take a little bit of the colour on the tip of the blender, blend that in. At this point you are finished with the Copic marker part of this card. Now if you had made a smaller card or for example if you just wanted that effect you could easily leave it there. In fact I think that is absolutely beautiful. The colours just blend beautifully and because you've used that blender it's also soft. Next, add some Distress Ink to the white space. So just get some ink on your applicator tool and working from the edges, rubbing in a circular motion, add the ink to the cardstock. Work the ink onto the edges of those Copic coloured areas just a little. Now the final step is to spritz this entire thing with the Glitz Spritz. I'm using the Desert Moon Purple Sage Glitz Spritz from Lindy's Stamp Gang. Now because this is water based it's going to react with those distress inks and you'll get a beautiful variation to your background. Use a tissue to blot excess from the embossing powder and leave it to air dry. 
but you can see the beautiful shimmer Glitz Spritz has put over the entire card. The Glitz Spritz as the final step really helps blend those colours together. I've tried to keep the card quite simple when I've finished it so that I can show off that beautiful background that I've created. I've mounted it on two coordinating colours of basil cardstock, added a flower embellishment, and then for the central panel I've actually cut this from the piece on the background so that it matches perfectly. I've got a lovely deep coloured flower, but even with the darkness of the colour, you can still see that beautiful shimmer from both the stickles and the little tiny bit of the Desert Moon Purple Sage I've sprayed over the top there. You can see the gorgeous shimmer that the background gets from those beautiful Lindy Stamp Gang products. Really pretty. I love the way the little bird turned out. Now when you add the shimmer it softens some of the colours so you can see even though I used that really dark C9 grey, it looks almost like a dark blue. Now that's a combination of the spray, the glimmer spray over the top, and that um, Copic blender pen. So this is what I've done for my little panel. You can see how nicely that matches up with the background. But mounting it on those uh, two sheets of cardstock that match with what I've mounted this on to, just raises it from the background a little and means that it's the first thing that catches your eye. Now the glimmer spray over those flowers has just made the colours mould into each other that much more, I suppose, perfectly. It looks like I've done all of this with great care, um, but really you saw what I did. <laughs> and there you have my beautiful Copic Glimmers technique. I hope you like it as much as I do.